Our next speaker uh, is Dr. Joel Bessmer. Uh, Joel uh, has a long uh, and prolific story in membership-based medicine, uh, most recently creating a company called Strata Health, where he is taking direct primary care, uh, essentially kind of through the Midwest and beyond. And we're here to hear his story. Well, there's some uh, big shoes to follow. And I'm going to end my talk with a challenge similar to what you just heard from Garrison. And, and I couldn't agree more. There, it, it's time for many of us to pick up this baton and carry it across. But God bless you, Garrison, for helping us get it started. So I'm here to talk about... Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm here to talk about not necessarily just direct primary care, but I'm here to talk about how uh, I think we have to to take this baton and move it to the next level. Be able to prove, as David said, I think so eloquently this morning, prove to the purchasers of health care. If we can't prove this to the employers, we're going to die on the vine. right? So we have to be able to create great data. And I'm here to show you how we can do that. Uh, so we talk about Strata Healthcare, but we talk about being powered by KPI Ninja. So KPI Ninja is an analytics firm who's here today. They're one of our sponsors. And I, I kind of talk about Vineeth and I are kind of married like Kathy and I are kind of married. Uh, but Vineeth has done some fantastic work for us, and you're going to get to see some of the results of that. So Strata Healthcare was founded in 2016. God bless Clint Flanagan and Nextera Health. He's one of my partners. And we basically just picked up the baton from Nextera Health and had to pass law in the state to first be able to do it, very similar to what Garrison had to do in Washington. It was actually illegal in the state of Nebraska for a physician to accept any cash from a patient. Uh, you were then indemnified as an insurance company and violating all the insurance laws. So first we had to pass law. So it, it was a lot of work in the beginning to get going, and I have, in a way, been doing this for some time, but through a concierge level. So then once we're able to pass this, we're able to get it going. So we today have locations throughout Nebraska, into Iowa. We're running basically a direct primary care hybrid model, and 90% of our patients in Strata Healthcare come from the employer. So I, I like this little cartoon because everybody's kind of seen it before and you have to add whatever you want to the thing. We still get plenty of confusion today about direct primary care and is it insurance or isn't it? And I'm not going to talk about that today because you guys obviously understand that. But I really believe data is a big deal for direct primary care. And I think, once again, it's, it's time that we take the movement and we prove that what we're doing is making a difference. We all know that. We all feel that. But without data, you can't convince an employer to pay the money, right? So here's some of the metrics that we're following as we do direct primary care. And this is just a list of a few of them. There are many more, but this is what powering yourself with Strata and KPI Ninja can do, is we want to be able to follow all of these things and once again be able to publish and create great data and tell our story. So the first story is about Burton Plumbing. So Burton Plumbing is a great Omaha, Nebraska plumbing company owned by Mark Evans. Mark Evans is an innovative COO. The guy gets it. And what he really gets is that Omaha, Nebraska is a very difficult community to own a plumbing company because Omaha has as many or more regulations on plumbing than any other city in the United States other than New York. So when you get master plumbers, you want to do everything you can to keep them because they're very difficult to come by. So he loves his employees. He was paying for all of their benefits and those kinds of things. And so we met with Mark and said, we think we can help you and help you do better and help your employees. And so we started a study, and the good news is we had nothing going in, right? So this is the beginning of Strata Healthcare. We start Strata Healthcare with getting data from day one. So we start with data points on everybody and follow all of those metrics. So every one of the employees got blood draws and biometrics at zero, time zero, the start of the study, six months and one year. But as you can see, sometimes there's hazards in your data. So you can see on the screen right now, our per member per month charge at one year, this is one year's data. If you were a non-strata 
um, patients, you elected not to participate in Strata while working for Burton Plumbing. Your cost uh, to Mark was $568.18. However, if you decided to go with Strata, your cost to Mark was $133.04. And I want you to understand that included Strata's cost. Our costs are similar to Nextera and similar with everybody else. We're $99 a month, $79 a month, $49 for ch children, and $299 is where we max our families. So with that cost included, you can see where you end up. So this now gives us great power to be able to go to employers to be able to say, if you will take a chance with us, right, we can now prove that we can save you money. So a few of the others, per member per month spend in pharmaceutical spending, this blows my mind. But a lot of it is because of what you've heard from Dr. Zog, right? We have to do a better job teaching our patients about how they're damaging their bodies, right? If we can't spend more time and teach them this, if instead we are only throwing a pharmaceutical solution at them, we will not make a big difference in the end. And the reason you see that big difference in our spend is we are really trying to spend the time to educate the patients on what they're doing to damage their bodies. We've, get, we've hooked up with Spruce, which has been phenomenal. Spruce allows us to then reach out and proactively reach those patients to be able to say, how are you doing it two weeks? How are you doing it four weeks? Were you able to institute the plan that we brought together and do those kinds of things? And that's what allows you to change the spend in pharmaceuticals. Here's emergency room visits. Non-strata would average about 151 uh, ED visits per 1,000 patients. And you can see we've uh, done a little damage to that. Here is inpatient admissions. So once again, lots and lots of data at becoming available to help you prove to the employers that we can make a difference. And one of the biggest keys, I think, in understanding why you want to bring analytics into direct primary care is similar to any other study you've read in medicine, and that is the unintended consequences of what you're looking at. So when we started Strata and we went and hooked up with Mark and we talked about all the metrics we wanted to follow, Workman's Comp never even entered my thought process, never even entered something that we thought we would follow or look at. But luckily we did. And it's one more example of the unintended consequences of great primary care. So if you think about this and you say, well, how is it that if you're a Strata uh, signed up with Strata, you actually have less injuries than if you're not with Strata. It may not be that there's less injuries, it's just that you're coming to your primary care doctor rather than going to a work comp clinic. And so all of those injuries may not get reported the same way also. There could be a number of things that are playing a role there. But as interesting in the work comp injuries per month was the fact that within one year we saved him hundreds of thousands of dollars in work comp spend. So you can start to see that as we bring those analytics in, we can make a big difference and we can prove then to the employers that this really is something you want to do for your employees. And I think this is how we help move that baton across the market and we get it to the finish line by once again being able to prove. There certainly are issues that Jay Keese is helping us with. We need an HSA fix because that is still a problem. So many of the employers have worked diligently to get their patients to use HSAs. And now when we're approaching them and saying, we've got a solution for you, they're bothered by the fact that the HSAs can't be used. So it, it clearly is still a big stepping stone in fixing this at the employer level. So we've got great data on fixing the cost and deliveries, and we can do that through direct primary care. Each and every one of you are doing this every day. You may not be able to show your own data, but it's real, and that's what we want to continue to do. But wouldn't it be fantastic if we actually had the data that actually showed not only do we spend less, but we improved healthcare outcomes? And we do. So what was most interesting to us also is not just the spend, but that we spent a lot less money and we improved every healthcare metric we followed. I'm gonna say that again. We improved 
every healthcare metric we followed. I'm showing you gathers of data here on some of them, but it didn't matter whether it was total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, every one of them, strata versus traditional medicine was better. So you start to get an idea. Not only do we have to go with the promise of, hey, we can save money, but it actually is better healthcare. We've all known that, we've all felt that, but once again, being able to prove it with data we think is a big deal. So what's next for Strata Healthcare? This is huge. Um, so we were able to lead through the state, so we started by you know, getting direct primary care legal, I have a great relationship with a couple of the legislative people down there, as well as with our governor. And so we were able to now lead through the legislature, LB 1119. Um, there was a little signing ceremony at my office when the governor signed it into law. And LB 1119, I believe, is going to be a huge difference maker for direct primary care and making it relevant throughout the country. And the reason why is how many of you are familiar with ERISA law? Raise your hand. Fantastic, so I don't have to do a lot of explanation of that. So if you're familiar with ERISA law, you would understand that when, I, when we pass Legislative Bill 1119, it's to put state employees or allow state employees to choose strata healthcare and follow all the analytics to once again prove the concept. If you understand ERISA law, then you understand that once we prove this, bar the doors, because that means every school system, Every county employee, every city employee, every state employee, all those things where their health care is being paid for by tax dollars should be cared for in a direct primary care way or those employers are violating ERISA law. And if you know an ERISA lawyer, they will tell you ERISA law scares people because it actually is one of the few laws that really has teeth behind it. So understanding that once we can prove the metrics and show the analytics and prove that not only do we save money, but we improve the healthcare outcomes, then we need primary care back in our country again. And that's really what the movement is about. How do we create an environment where medical students and residents are saying, that's a primary care I can see myself practicing. And that's what Garrison has gotten started for us. So LB 1119, or now the law 1119, is basically Strata Healthcare doing a clinical study over the next four years with state employees to show that direct primary care saves the state money and improves healthcare outcomes. And I hope to be able to come back next year and give you an update on our data and show you what we're following and what we're approving and how many patients and all the data on that similar to what we did with uh, Burton Plumbing. So data is like garbage. You better know what you're doing before you collect it, and there's a lot of truth to that. So I want to end with a challenge to the direct primary care people in the room in a little bit of the, the comments that you also heard from Garrison. We have to come together. We have to come together if we're going to be able to take on the big employers. I need to be able to go to TD Ameritrade that centers in Omaha, Nebraska, but yet is out in New Jersey and in every city in the United States to get TD Ameritrade signed up, right? But I can't do that if we don't come together as a coalition, right, to be able to say, who do I go to in Charlotte, North Carolina? Who do I go to in Chicago? Who do we go to? And so how many of you in the room are familiar with Roamed, R-O-A-M-D? Anybody? So there are a few of us. So I'm on the board of Roamed. Uh, Jordan Schlain is on the board of Roamed and is here. Dan Driscoll, our CEO, is here. And I see what Roamed is doing in my private concierge network, where we're bringing private concierge physicians together to cover for each other, and yet in a way that the practice can still make money and the patients benefit. That is a solution we need yet in direct primary care that we don't have. We need a way that we can bring all of the DPC people together and yet let you stay independent. So that's something we need to continue to work hard towards. I've heard Zach talk about it, Mike talk about it, and that's that hit community idea. That we come together in some sort of community where we can communicate back and forth about our patients where we need to get help and find providers. So that's the challenges that we've got to continue to do that. 
So thanks for your time. I'll be able to answer any questions. I'll be out around uh, KPI Ninja table if you have questions about how did we do this with data, what data are we following, how could we help you follow data, any of those kinds of things. Thanks for your time.